Hey, it's Sandra. Welcome to another episode of Asexualized, my asexual life. This is a place to be for education about asexuality, all things asexual. I share my own asexual life journey in order to help you and yours. If you haven't already subscribed, please hit the great big subscribe button right below, right here, right now. Please hit that bell icon so you get notified of every time I go live like now or post a new video. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you find it useful, helpful, insightful in any way, entertaining, or you just want to give this channel some like love. The thumbs up really does help me out and helps raise more awareness of asexuality. If you don't know who I am, I am Sandra Bellamy, author of this beautiful book, Asexual Perspectives, 47 Asexual Stories, Love, Life and Sex, A Celebration of Asexual Diversity. I'm also the founder of Asexualize.com and the founder of Asexualize Academy. Welcome to tonight's episode where I'm talking about cute stuff. So I was under the umbrella with a cute foreign guy and this is what happened. So this actually happened a little while ago. And I was meaning to tell you before, but I kind of forgot because other videos became more important. But I thought it was so cute and sweet what happened. So I was coming back from the city centre and this guy um, literally ended up coming right next to me and he works in my local supermarket. Now, if you follow this channel, you'll know that I'm attracted to foreign guys, younger foreign guys, and that most of the guys in my local supermarket are younger and foreign. So this is quite interesting. And literally he came up beside me and so we were at the um, traffic lights together and it was really... Um, raining and he was late for work by 45 minutes so I thought he was just gonna say hi and then he was gonna run off to work but instead of doing that he actually just stayed with me put the umbrella over me to make sure that I wasn't getting wet and he wasn't getting wet and carry on talking to me all the way to when I had to go off to my home just before the supermarket where he worked so I just wanted to let you know that I thought that was so cute and sweet because it's not right, kind of normal, is it? If someone's really, really running late for work, for them to just stop and carry on talking, you know, like stop, see you, and then carry on talking. Like this person, I do say hello to when he's at the tail and I do talk to him, but like I had more of a conversation with him then because obviously it was kind of like outside his work. So I was asking him if he has a lot of friends in Exeter and he said he did. And I was asking him how long he lived in this country. He's lived here five years, so he can apply, he can apply for residency now, but I don't think he's done that yet. And I, he was he is really cute. He's very different to other looking to, to a lot of other guys. He's more of a how can I put it? More of a like, you know, like some guys are drop dead gorgeous. This guy's more of a cute guy, if you know what I mean. More of a cute and um normal guy. <laughs> If you know what I mean? He's more of a like really cute guy. Do you know what I mean? Like some like you look at some people, some people are sweet, some people are gorgeous, some people are attractive, some people are beautiful. And he's really cute. And I just felt it was so nice that he was holding the umbrella over me as well because he didn't want me to get wet while he was going to work. And I'm like, well, won't they um you know, won't you know, like how long are you like how you know how much time is it that you're late by and he's when he said 45 minutes I'm like oh you, if you want to run on the head that's fine but he didn't he just stayed carry on talking to me he said oh it never happens usually my alarm you know I never usually have a problem with the alarm these only ever happen one other time or something so it's the second time it's ever happened so yeah so I just thought it's really really cute and I think asexuals think a lot of things and scenarios and people are cute and when you hear sexuals talk, like sexuals are, are always saying, oh, this person's sexy, this person's hot, this person's like, they want to basically shag him and stuff like that, which is kind of disgusting to me. And, you know, they use all this like language and it kind of makes you feel a bit creeped out, to be honest. Um, it, it makes you feel a bit, I don't know, I feel like it's a bit seedy, some of the language they use. And I just feel uncomfortable, like, in that type of environment really but I think the asexual environment is so much better because it's all based basically a lot of the time on sweetness cuteness and that to me reminds me more of like the teenager style love relationship that I like you know the one where it's sweet it's innocent it's cute it's cuddly and you know lots of asexuals tend to like animals particularly cats 
So I think we all tend to love like fluffy stuff. Do you know what I mean? And I've noticed a lot of asexuals, they tend to have um, things like action figures, dolls, cuddly toys. So, and this, this is when we're not just um, kid in burst of age. It's when we're older, we tend to like cute, fluffy stuff. And I think, you know, that's a very big difference between asexuals and sexuals in the lifestyle. Because when I first found out I was asexual and I've got all these cuddly toys in my bedroom, you can't really see them. I mean, you can see some on my bed, but you can't really see all the ones um, in the walls, on the walls, I should say, on the shelves on the walls. But if you go back through this channel live stream, when I could actually live stream and show you parts of my room, you can see them. There, I've got all eels and cuddly toys and stuff everywhere. And I noticed that's a very big pattern with asexuals. When I first started going in asexual groups on Facebook, I was like, wow, these people have got bedrooms like me. And there was other people, other asexuals that had like shelves and shelves of cuddly toys. And their bedrooms also look like a teenager's bedroom. Do you know what I mean? Like mine does. You know, like I've got an Iron Man alarm clock, Winnie the Pooh, a bedside lamp. I've got eels. I've got like sparkly hearts and things sparkly baubles I just got like you know like you can see the picture on the wall that's like caricature with sheep on there you know I've got cuddly toys on my bed a, a frozen throw and I, I think a lot of the time that asexuals tend to retain their youth a lot more because of these type of things I'm not saying all asexuals do but I think we retain our youth more because we're not you know like so, we're not into all the adult sex kind of stuff and all the what can I say all the kind of like adult like drudgery that goes with it if you know what I mean I don't know how to express it but basically you know when you get into that like, heterosexual world and you're you know that type of lifestyle to be honest because I've been in that type of lifestyle to me it's like adult but boring and monotonous and not cute and fluffy it's more like focused on obviously the sex and a sexual relationship it's like where's the cute and cuddliness do you know what I mean and I think with asexuals you have a much higher chance of being able to have a more young fun loving cute cuddly relationship you know um I think you know we tend to look at things um in a more cute cuddly way you know I, I hear you know, I've had guys, asexual guys say to me, you, you know, you're cute and stuff like that. And I really like that, you know. I think it's really nice because I personally, I don't mind being called sexy and hot by a sexual guy. But when an asexual guy says to me, you're beautiful or you're cute, you know, I just think that's worth a lot more because it's like sexual guys. They tend to get sexually attracted to just multiple people, like tons of them. And I don't feel like I'm anything special. I feel like they just say that to loads of women. I mean, I have had loads of guys say that to me about being really good looking, sexy, hot, beautiful. So, you know, it must be true. Um, but I, you know, I tend to put more um, feeling and emotion and like belief in what asexuals say. Do you know what I mean? Because asexuals are not sexually attracted usually therefore if they say I look cute or beautiful I feel it's more of a a more pure beauty they're looking at they're not looking from a I want to have sex with you now they're looking from a oh you've got an attractive face or you've got a nice smile or you've got a nice hair do you know what I mean and so I find that much more refreshing I find that much more lovely much more loving much more caring and I just feel like good do you know what I mean I actually prefer the words beautiful when a guy calls me beautiful I I really makes me feel good you know even if a sexual person said it you know like there was a guy um oh hi Sam how you doing nice to see you um there was a guy that I called bike man and he a bicycle and he used to like he last used the words before he waved at me the other day because he didn't stop to talk to me so he's obviously over me now uh and the fact that I'm asexual and don't want sex and can't be with him but you know he did say oh you're beautiful and I just found that so much better than when a guy goes oh you're sexy you're hot and all that lot because you know like I don't mind being called that but I'm much rather an asexual guy say I'm beautiful or I'm cute and stuff like that. I just find it so much more endearing 
I find it so much more. I'm good making soup, but taking it off the heat and we'll finish it after the stream. Oh, I'm glad you're you're good. I want to try tomato basil, but people usually put cream in there, double cream. I can't have that. But I'm going completely off the topic. But um, when I was, I went to, uh, where did I go? I can't remember. Uh, Newquay. I went to Newquay on holiday. And the hotel we stayed at cooked food freshly on the premises. And they cooked this amazing tomato basil soup that had no allergens in. So no added sugar, no milk, no cream. Um, it was just beautiful. It was one of the best soups I've ever had in my life. And so um, I'd love it if you can make me that one day. <laughs> Sorry, I'm being a bit like outspoken here saying I'd love it if you could make me that one day. Because I would, to be honest, because I hate cooking, as you know, and I don't like you were asking about local soups in the supermarket i've only ever had there was one year that they did do gluten-free wheat-free sugar-free soups and they had was it two or three varieties and then they just they were limited like limited stock and then they never had them back in again <laughs> i'm like thanks a bunch do you know what i mean mind you they did get expensive they're like a quid a pot so do you know what i mean like once you start buying three or four of them it's like four quid gone um, but I did really like, but I did really like them. But the best soup I ever had was at Newquay, and it was really like I'm going off the subject because I'm talking about Newquay now. Hi, oh Lou, nice to see you. Lots of love. Hi, thank you for the nice comment on the pic of me and my niece on Facebook. You're welcome. It was nice to see your face because I know like, I didn't used to see your face on Facebook, so I never knew what you looked like. But you look very beautiful as well. So. Um, Thank you so much. I'm I'm really glad that you like the comment. Yeah, I know you noticed you said your niece means a lot to you. So that's really good. Yeah, I'm not into kids personally, but I just thought it was like really nice picture of you too. And I thought it was nice to see you as well. Do you know what I mean? And you're obviously your niece is part of your family anyway. So it's good that you uh, care about your family. Really, really nice. Yeah, I was talk I'm talking on this stream tonight about things that I find cute and that asexuals find cute. Because I had, um, I, I was, um, to cut a long story short, because I've already been doing that stream for 12 months, there was a guy who works in my local supermarket. It was a younger foreign guy. And uh, I happened to be walking the same way as him because I was going coming back from the city. And he was late for work by 45 minutes. And instead of running on ahead, he held an umbrella over me so we could talk in the rain. And I thought that was so cute. It was, I actually thought it was quite romantic, but he didn't mean it in a romantic way, but it was very, very cute. And I just thought, oh, isn't that sweet? You know what I mean? Like I'm I'm talking to a younger foreign guy and he's putting the umbrella over my head because he doesn't want me to get wet, yet he's funning 45 minutes late for work. I mean, he wasn't that fussy with it because he said I phoned them up anyway and told them. But do you know what I mean? <laughs> he was like just minning along, like walking with me, talking with me. So um i was saying as well that i noticed a lot of asexuals we have cuddly toys in our room some of uh i noticed some have action figures you know i think we i think we like and a lot of asexuals like cats as well yeah lou i thought that was really nice of him he's a really sweet cute guy actually in looks he's very very cute he's not the usual type i go for Thank you, Sam. Yeah, I thought that was so cute. It didn't happen. It happened a little while ago, but I always meant to talk about it on this channel, but other videos took over, but I just thought it was so cute. Yeah, you have loads of cuddly toys too. You possibly have more than me. I've seen your collection. But I noticed a lot of asexuals, we like cute, fluffy things. Like a lot of asexuals like cats. Um, a lot of asexuals, like if we don't like, you know, like if it's not cats, it's some other fluffy animal. Um, usually, I mean, there are some asexuals that like lizards and snakes and tarantulas, but I do notice that a lot of asexuals do have cats, predominantly cats. I just got RC cars, laugh out loud. Is that racing cars, I presume? <laughs> I actually used to have little cars when I was a kid. I used to have um, an orange one, like the Dukes of Hazard, a mini one. And I used to have a pink one and used to pull it back. Oh, remote control. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. <laughs> My brain's not engaged. And, um, and I used to have this pink car and I used to pull it back and it used to go flying and sparks used to fly out of it. I used to love that. Just pull it back by hand. And it's like a spring system that used to shoot off. So when I was a kid, I used to have some like guys toys, if you know what I mean. 
and girls' toys. So, but apparently, I used to hate dolls. I don't know why. Apparently, I used to go around telling girls they were stupid for having dolls. I don't know this. This is what my parents told me. But then I didn't. See, I don't understand why I would say that when I got had dolls myself. I also had cars as well. So I wasn't just having the typical female um, toys, but I was having guy toy. You know, tr stereotypical guy toys as well. If you know what I mean. So I had a mixture of both. So that was quite interesting. Yeah, remote control cars. I've got a remote control vehicle, but I'll probably be getting rid of it because I don't use it. It's a big truck. Well, it's about that big and it's remote control, big wheels. It's a really good one, actually, but I just don't use it. So there's not really much point in keeping stuff all the time you don't use. I built villages in my garden as a kid for all my action figures. Wow. I had a nice little society going for years. Oh, wow. So I didn't know that. That is very cute. <laughs> oh, wow. Village is my God. Oh, wow. That's really, that is really cute. And I think, you know, I think I, asexuals can find things cute in relationships and cute outside of relationships. Like that to me is a very cute thing to do, you know, like, like it's not exactly I'm going to go around fancying action figures and villagers is it but you know it's not something cute in that way but it's something cute as in it's very sweet that you did that for your action figures that you like your action figures that much do you know what i mean so i think asexuals can find things completely different to sexuals like we we talk in a much more like i think nicer language a lot of the time you know cute fluffiness sweetness handsome beauty rather than all this lust talk do you know what i mean like like I said before on this earlier on this video, I don't mind being called sexy and hot and stuff, but do you know what I mean? If if a guy who's asexual calls me beautiful and cute, I just find that much better. It's, I, I trust it more, do you know what I mean? Because I just think, well, you're seeing my real beauty. You're not after me for sex. And I think that's a huge difference for someone to see your aesthetic beauty. I'd rather a guy see me aesthetically beautiful, do you know what I mean, than sexy and hot because it just means he wants to have sex with me basically do you know what I mean I'd rather I'd rather a guy think I'm cute and sweet do you know what I mean and so actually as well cute and sweet quite young words as well and I like that you know like I've got a lot of cuddly toys as you know and I think cuddly toys are really cute but I think gnomes are cute I think nearly anything's cute because <laughs> I think not nearly anything not bad things but um because I'm like a hyper romantic, I do think a lot of things are cute. Like I do think gnomes are cute. I'd rather be called beautiful, handsome, cute than sexy or hot. Also, oh, that's good, Sam. I did wonder about that. Yeah, I thought you would be the same as me. We're so, we're so alike on some things. I love it so much. It's so good. We cover this channel. You're like, oh, I feel exactly the same way too. Because I often, before I had you as my best friend and you came into my life, you know, and we're really amazing friends. I didn't have many people like me, not even the asexual sphere. And I know we're different on kissing because I'm mad for kissing and you're not into it at all, really, very much. Um, especially not with females. Um, and I, but you know, I'm, I'm with, I like guys and so do you but even so you're not into kissing like I am do you know what I mean and it's so nice to have you on my channel saying I agree with you because you know I feel like sometimes that I'm quite a rare asexual and that not many people have the same views as me and so it's really nice that I've got you that you know where you um say you feel that way too I feel really supported by you so I just wanted to say thank you very much I really appreciate that and I know you're just doing it to say it because you know like you, you will say things if you don't agree or have a difference of opinion like the kissing obviously um so I know you're not just saying it for the sake of it but I know we're like on some, quite a lot of things so it's good not everything but a lot of things so that's really good yeah yeah I like that as well I love you know if a guy says oh you're so beautiful and actually you can see it in his eyes. I just really like that. I just think it's so much better than sexy and hot. Because sexy and hot, I just feel like they're such throwaway terms these days. Do you know what I mean? I feel like guys just... I mean, obviously, women use this sort of language as well. But I'm not interested in women. So I talk about guys mostly on this channel in relation to who I talk about. And do you know what I mean? And it's like, you know, um, it's just like when they say sexy and hot, it's just like another guy that wants to have sex with me. or shag me oh do you know what I mean or the f word and it's just like not another one do you know what I mean I mean some women might love it but I don't I just like I'd rather be called beautiful cute sweet 
Do you know what I mean? Adorable, those type of words, because I prefer that type of language. I prefer cute language. So I don't just think I, I like cute life. Like in terms of a relationship, like I do, as I've said before, like um, certain level of intimacy with clothes on that might be too much for some people. But you know, if it goes over a certain level, I don't like it. It it, it frightens me. It's like it's too adult. It's too se- it get, can get too sexual and. I just don't like that. It loses its cute and cuddly and teenager star relationship feel to me. And then it becomes too much of an adult star relationship where it's getting far too sexual. So for me, it's like really, really weird. I kind of I need a good balance. But I mean, I'm very with some of the stuff I do in a relationship, I would say like with my kissing, especially and the way I do it and the different positions I kiss in with my clothes on, I would say it's very probably sexy and very um sexual and behavior but there comes a point where I don't like it and it's just too much for me if a guy does too much and I just feel like I want to run away do you know what I mean because it's like oh it's too much I just want to get back to cuddling my cuddly doys and live in the sweet innocent life not all this sexual stuff do you know what I mean it gets a bit much for me so I find it a bit difficult to to um to know that I do like probably a lot more than some other people, some other asexuals, a lot of kind of like um, sometimes erogenous um, kissing and positions with clothes on. But then I have the other side of that where, you know, like I don't want to take my clothes off. It doesn't appeal and I don't like that. And if a guy starts doing stuff underneath my clothes it starts repulse it depends but the top part it just repulses me I'm like I don't feel comfortable I'm like maybe other women like that but it's just like you know I mean some of it are like um I was in a scenario quite a while ago a couple of years ago where I had this boyfriend that I never met in person and he just started to talk about stuff and it just really put me off the whole thing of seeing him really and I start getting really worried because I just thought he was going to be too sexual because I like kissing right but I don't know the way he was talking. I just thought it was going to get too. I'm not normally afraid or worried about kissing, but the way he was talking about, it, I just didn't like it. To me, it was just like going off kissing and more into sexual stuff. And do you know what I mean? The point is, I really love kissing in and of itself. I don't need it to lead to like too much sex. And I don't, you know, I don't like aggressive kissing either. You know, like um, just because I like passionate kissing, there's a big difference between passion and aggressive. And some people don't understand the difference. So passionate, like. You know, like you're kind of in, even if it feels like um, a lot of kissing, the passion, you're kind of like always kind of feeling control of it and you're not being hurt at all. And you can always like remove yourself if you don't like it. And aggressive kissing is when someone's trying to bite you during kissing. Someone's like, you know, that their body language is quite aggressive. Their teeth are kind of like, you know, you can see it in their face. It's like, and really a lot of the time that people kiss you aggressively is because they want sex with you. You know, if I kissed a sexual person who was really a hypersexual, really into kissing, uh, but leading to sex, they would want the sex. So you would see it in their face. They were getting very frustrated because they couldn't have the sex. Do you see what I mean? So, so there's a very, very big difference there. Like, even though I passionately kiss, I never feel like I'm out of control. I never feel like bad, but that's probably because I'm very picky over who I let kiss me in a passionate way. Do you know what I mean? If I don't feel comfortable with the guy, I don't trust him. Okay, I have to go to go getting off my work break. Bye, and thanks again for the comment. Oh, Lou, lots of love to you. Yeah, you're beautiful, Lou, as well. You have a very nice face. So lots of love. Yeah, thank you for spending a bit of time with me on this channel. Love you lots. And don't forget to this video thumbs up if you haven't already. That'd be really nice. Thank you so much. Thanks for hearts. Have a lovely day. But yeah, so um, I just, um, I think it gets like, you know, I think it gets to the stage where it's not cute or cuddly anymore. And it's, you know what I mean? It's too, it's just too much, you know? And so like the, the guy that, um, was an online boyfriend that I never met in real life you know he the stuff he was saying I mean he got funny anyway when I wouldn't take my clothes when I said I won't be taking my clothes off in the hotel it just won't happen and that's when he started changing so that was no good for me to stay in a relationship with him but um 
Do you know what I mean? It's just like sometimes um, it can lose its cute and cuddly. And I don't want that in a relationship. I want a teenager star relationship where I always feel cute and cuddly. And if I if I kiss passionately, to me, it's the way it's done, although it can be quite sexual in behaviour and a guy would find it quite sexy, it it's not a prequel to sex for me. Oh, hi, Ray. Nice to see you. It's not a prequel to sex to me. So I just like it in and of itself. But like I said, if I get, I'm not interested in taking my clothes off. I'm not interested in that type of thing. Do you know what I mean? And so I think there's a, a you've got to be really kind of careful about what you like in a relationship and what you don't like in a relationship. And, you know, and like kind of work out what you find cute and what you like in life as well, you know, because I think it's really important to have not just cuteness in relationship, but cute uh, things around you, you know, your environment's really important, you know, like if I, like some of my cuddly toys, right, that I've said I will get, um, always make it clear what you want, yes, Ray, it's very important, um, but some of my cuddly toys that I'm getting rid of, you know, like if I, if I don't get rid of them, then I'll keep them, if you know what I mean, so I won't just give them away because, you know, to me, they're, I really like them. Do you know what I mean? So, um, I, you know, like I was saying on yesterday's video, you have the right to change your mind. So I might change my mind about some of them if I want to keep some of them. I think it's good to get rid of quite a bit as much as possible because that's like my past life. But, you know, my my now I've taken quite a bit away. There's like my I'm looking up and it's looking a bit bland in my room. Do you know what I mean? And my, my personality isn't bland. My personality is cute, cuddly, fluffy stuff and not just bland, boring stuff. So do you know what I mean? It might be that, you know, if I don't get rid of all of my cuddly toys, I might just put, uh, you know, some of them back. I found one though that I didn't know I had. So I've put that up there. Although I have to say, because of the way my wardrobe is and fitting him in, he, he looks like he's sitting in a very sexy position. And I'm like talking to him going, why are you looking so sexy? You're a cuddly toy for. <laughs> it's like, the pose I've got him is like really funny. I'm talking about a cuddly toy here. Very cute cuddly toy. Shall I get him down? But it'll, it'll lose his position. Sorry, you're going to see my legs now. <laughs> I forgot I'd even had this one. Look, this is such a cute thing. Look at this eel. <laughs> so I'm going to keep him. And like when I put him on top of my wardrobe, He's like laid back like that or something. It's hard to see. So like this way, I think it is. So because I put him up there, he was up there, but I put him there because it's bland now and I've got nothing up there. But he's like sat with his legs crossed or something. You can't really see it very well. And he's like laid with his hand back. So he looks like he's got his arm on my um, Blu-ray DVD boxes and he's got his legs spread out. So he looks like he's in this kind of... I don't know, a bit sexy or sexual position. <laughs> like, I'm thinking this is a type of pose I see guys do in their photographs on dating sites when they're trying to get sex. And I'm like, it's a cuddly toy. Why are you putting it? But in all, I've got a little triangle of space before my boxers up on my wardrobe up there. And I've got to fit him in without him falling down into my wardrobe. So I kind of put him in this laid back position. And I'm thinking, you're in a very sexy position, mate. And you're meant to be a cuddly toy. But I do really find this one very cute. So I've decided, I didn't even know I had him. I forgot I had him. So I decided to keep him, at least for now, because he's very cute. And I need to look at something cute because if I'm just looking at bland stuff all the time, it just bores me. And I don't want to lose my whole sense of like um, kidness just for the sake of being a bit more adult getting rid of stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm stroking his hair now. <laughs> I do think that, you know, it's really nice to have fluffy stuff. I really like this one. Look, play with his little tummy. Play with your little tummy. So, <laughs> I should have done this as a, as a thumbnail for this video. I do think this is cute. I mean, you've got to admit, this is a very cute eel. He's got beanie bum as well. Woo! Beanie bum! Beanie bum! <laughs> I really like this. I didn't even realise I had it. I think it must have been one of the last ones I got bought. I think my ex did bite me, but, you know, like I said, I mean, I think like, a lot of the time I want to get rid of the stuff he bought me to get new stuff. But, you know, in the meantime, like, if I got rid of like everything he got me, I was pretty much have no eatles left, I worked out. So I don't think that's going to be very good because I need eatles around me. I need fluffy stuff around me because otherwise I just feel like it's too adult in here and too boring. Do you know what I mean? So I can, I forgot I even had this, so I can't 
have many bad memories from it because obviously I didn't even realize I had it. But he is so cute. He's a very, 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 very cute eel, don't you think? And I thought it's really nice because I can look at him and think, Ew, you're so cute. Woo! <laughs> so, yeah, you can tell I've been playing with the real thing all day. <laughs> Ray, I'm not sure what you mean. You've been playing. <laughs> it's a good job this is an asexual channel, isn't it? The mind boggles, really. Um, I've been working with donkeys all day. Oh, right. Now you tell me. Right, okay. Of the actual real fluffy type. Sorry. Sometimes I have a naughty mind, even though I'm asexual, which is quite amusing. Um, <laughs> that's really funny that I talked about donkeys and you're talking about an actual, you know, like you've been uh, working with donkeys all day. We have a donkey sanctuary near where I live. Well, not too close. At Sidmouth. I might actually do an asexual meetup there one day because it's free to go around and you can get to spend time with the donkeys. Cause I used to do, um, ch you know, like charity, uh, things for them, you know, to raise money. And I used to buy raffle tickets, sell raffle tickets for them and all sorts. So I usually get their newsletter and, uh, the woman that owned the company, she's died now, but she gave, she actually gave me a copy of her book, um, some years ago because I was doing some writing project or something. She goes, Oh, you can have, have a copy of my book i didn't even have to buy it it was really sweet of her but she's um she's not actually alive anymore but you know her name lives on through the center but they have um donkeys um that work with disabled children there so it's really good but you can go and, and walk around all the fields with all the different donkeys and you can actually there's a part where you can go in and stroke the donkeys it's really really nice i mean you know pretty much it's all only got donkeys there and a, a gift shop and a cafe most of it and they had a maze last time which i think i got lost in actually um, which was a new feature a maze where you get lost they do have remembrance um they do have remembrance benches there and things like that so so it's um it's really important that you know you get you get to be around cute fluffy stuff like i really like this eat or i just find it so cute and so yeah i think asexuals do tend to look for i can't stop playing with my <laughs> look at his eyes it's so cute um so yeah you can tell that i live in cute land can't you <laughs> so you know i think it's important that um you know that you maintain your sweetness and innocence and cuteness in life do you know what i mean because i think like as time goes by People like start talking and saying, oh, actual age. And I, I absolutely hate that phrase because the word act means you're not being your true self anyway. Do you know what I mean? So it, that's why I look at it. If you're acting your age, then you, they're, you're being told to act the birth certificate age that you are. But you should be the age you want to be. And that means any age you choose to be. Do you know what I mean? It's really important that you be the age you want to be, not be the birth certificate age or that age that people dictate to you it's really important to be yourself be you be who you are and live like a the life that you want to lead i mean some people that are younger they want to lead an older life i am 50 a 55 by at like 20 i have to say ray that you look a lot younger now than the picture you showed me earlier i'm not going to say anything about the picture you showed me earlier other than that you looked um other than you looked um younger now i think i mean you've got you've got different colored hair you've got grayer hair obviously but you actually look younger now the clothes you wear a face looks younger i think now personally i was quite surprised but yeah so it's good and you've got another date coming up haven't you i think doing very well you're doing very well so um in terms of relationships like what what do asexuals find cute in relationships i mean that is a subjective question obviously because different people can find different things cute in a relationship to others but i think some of the things asexuals find cute in relationships are the things like holding hands you know that that can be quite cute just in and of itself just holding the person's hand and just feeling the warmth of their hand in yours and you know like and maybe going for a walk together holding hands you know like one of the things i like is near where i live i live five minutes walk from the quayside 
and you know what one of the ideal things for me to do would be like when I've got my younger Indian foreign guy is to go um for a walk along the quayside like um later on when it's darker I mean there are pubs and places there to eat as well so you know if it's not if it's it can be dark but not so there's no one around you know what I mean because I think that's a too dangerous then um but you know like you can go for a walk or you can sit on one of these benches and look at the stars and then the water I think that's really really romantic and nice do you know what I mean so I think that's very cute and romantic at the same time you know holding someone's hand and kissing them under the under the moon and the stars I think that's really really cute and, you know, like I personally like to go around, if I'm going around zoos and theme parks, aquariums, all that type of thing, I like kissing. I find kissing very cute when you're going around theme, like, you know, a theme park ride, you can wait like half an hour or even an hour for a ride and it gets so boring. I mean, obviously, if you're with your friends, you can chat to them and have conversation and you can do that with a partner. But when you live with a partner or spend a lot of time with a partner, you're kind of with them all the time. And so sometimes rather than just talking, you might want to kiss. <laughs> I mean, it's like, well, I do love talking with you anyway. I want to kiss. But I, I just love kissing, like, in between the rides. It's, like, m much more stimulating because I like the um, I like the stimulation of kissing. Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, well, the rides are very stimulating. So in between, I'll kiss. And I, I just love it. And, you know, like, when I'm waiting for theme park rides, if the guy's got his arms wrapped around me, kissing me, cuddling me, I find that so cute. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, oh, it doesn't matter that we're having to wait 30 minutes for a ride. Who cares? Because we're just enjoying being loved up, cute and cuddly. And we can be talking while he's cuddling me. You know, I like it when a guy, like I'm I'm st stood here and the guy's got his arms around me, around my back like this. It's really nice. You know, it's quite nice if you're short with a tall person. A lot of people who are, who a lot of people I come across, they've got a real thing about height in a relationship. I don't care about height in a relationship. I could be with a guy who's my height, like I'm five foot four and a half, so I'm very short. So I could be with a guy who's shorter than me or the same height as me, or my ex was six foot three. So I can be with any height guy. It doesn't bother me. If you're with a taller guy, it's quite nice because he can wrap his arms right round you and you, you know, you're cuddling him to his chest at the same time. So, you know, like, and I've never had a problem. It, it's like, People are like, how does that work? You're five foot four and a half, and the guy's six foot three. Isn't that really difficult? It's like, no, it never was. It was never an issue. I never, the only time it was weird was when I went around his place and everything was put high on shelves and I couldn't reach. And when you go around my place, he used to bang, bang his head on the ceiling because it's lower and stuff like, not this ceiling, but the one going up the stairs. And I would put things lower down. So that can be kind of weird. But that's why it's nice to live separately as well, because then he can have everything tall. I can have everything like lower level. And then when you're over, you have to ask people to pick the thing up for you if you can't reach it or go on top. Like I just like I went shopping tonight and climbed into a fridge, like, you know, because I can't reach sometimes the top shelf. So I just like get on there and climb in it. Uh, Ray, I to hug and watch the sunset. Oh, you like to hug and watch the sunset. Oh, that's really sweet. That's really sweet. Yeah, it's very, very romantic. Yeah. I mean, some people can be cute without being like full on romantic. And other, other times I think cuteness and romance go together. So I, I just think, you know, like sometimes a cute could just be like a little love note that you leave your partner. Okay. So I used to know this girl at college. And she was in a relationship. And when she used to leave the house, uh, she used to leave her partner a little love note. So she used to usually literally write him a love note. So he would get that when he came back from his work or his study. He would, you know, in, until he was seeing her next. And I just thought that was really sweet and very cute. So, you know, in a relationship, you don't, you know, like different people find different things cute. Some people might find holding hands cute. Some people might find taking a moonlit stroll cute. Some people might find like, I mean, I find it cute when I'm really cold and a guy gives me his jumper or gives me his coat when I'm really, really cold. And it's like, you know, like putting me first. Like, I think it's a very cute, sweet gesture. Do you know what I mean? Uh, when he does something like it's like putting me first, I find that really cute. Um, and I do find it cute when he cuddles me. And I do find I do find kissing around a zoo, like going around a zoo kissing. <laughs> I just find that so cute. Oh, <laughs> Ray's sending me. Oh my God. How many kisses are you sending me, Ray? Seven kisses. Actually, my lucky number's eight. So you need to put one up more on that. <laughs> That's very sweet. Thank you, Ray. Um, 
but yeah so um and something i do find cute <laughs> thank you something i do find cute is stickering you know like if you are in a relationship and the guy is stickering like um so you know like the emojis um the stickers and stuff like that so i like to be sent love heart stickers um like blowing kisses stickers uh just anything to do with hearts and kisses and stuff like that oh and something else i find really cute is bear paper it's so funny like my friend my best female friend right she knows um she knows what i'm like so sometimes when i have when i have christmas right if i've got all birthday and i've got paper that's got teddy bears on it i just get so happy about the paper i get overwhelmed i'm like oh it's so cute the paper is so cute and i've never seen anyone in their in their life as excited over some wrapping paper as myself and i get so i get so like excited about it. i'm like oh it's bare paper it's bare paper it's bare paper i was my best friend a female friend because obviously it sounds my best friend um i i had um a bag a christmas bag and it had a big bear on the christmas bag i was like oh this is so nice and she's got me bear paper before as well and i just thought it's so sweet you know so I think you can find different things sweet and cute. Like, you know, like um, I know there's um, usually uh, Nayla that's on here and her boyfriend made her a flower bracelet, I think it was. And other times um, he sent her or them um, a flower, um, a flower. Yeah. So I know Nayla, you know, really thinks that's romantic. And I think that's romantic and cute for Nayla. Do you know what I mean? Like in that relationship, I'd like that type of thing. Do you know what I mean? So I think you can do a lot of things, you know, like facial expressions can be cute. The way you look at someone, like the way you want to help someone out, uh, you know, the way you smile at a person um, or just something you say that's really kind, but kinder than kind of the normal thing. Like, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, oh, it's, it might be just something really sweet they say to you that makes you feel really special and good about yourself. And it's kind of like it's cute. Do you know what I mean? So I think that word for asexual suits us very well. Do you know what I mean? The cute thing. And I think you can find like an animals cute, objects cute, situations cute, gestures cute, tones of voice cute, facial expressions cute. And yeah, I just like living in a cute world. <laughs> I just think that being cute and living with cute stuff is a lot better than being sexual, living with sexual stuff and doing sexual stuff. Do you know what I mean? I just find like I, I find cuteness and sweetness and beauty. I find that's when I talk about it as an asexual person, I feel warm. I feel really warm and happy and snugly and good about myself and good about life and love and situations. It just makes me feel great. Then when I think about like the sexual stuff, sometimes the hot, sexy, like it doesn't have the same ring to it, does it? It's a bit like a deflated rubber ring that's how I kind of feel do you know what I mean like when it's cute and cuddly I'm like oh I feel warm and snuggly and I feel all happy and excited for life and loving it because I, I find a lot of stuff cute and sweet even with myself and I just love life and feel really romantic and like you know like lately I've been finding out like more stuff I'm good at and when you find out stuff you're good at it just makes you feel great do you know what I mean it's like cute moments and then when I talk about sexual stuff and you know like sometimes I think like oh I'd like to go out some on some dates or you know probably it'll happen with sexuals more than asexuals and then I'm thinking but I like the dates for the romance and cuteness but then that's not what they're after are they they're after just sex and sexual stuff and they're just like it kind of overclouds the cuteness and it's just like it's just like boring and more it is like a rubber rubber ring being deflated. That's the only way I can describe it. I go from cute cuddliness, happiness, excitability, feeling really good to like, and then there's sex. And then there's guys that want sex. And then there's guys that want more sex. And then there's guys that take their top off thinking their chest is great. And I don't get attracted to that at all. And it's like, look how good looking I am. And I'm like, well, really, I don't get attracted to muscly men at all. I prefer a skinny guy, if I'm honest. Like a skinny, scrawny guy is fine by me. It doesn't have to be skinny or scrawny, but I do get attracted more to a skinny guy. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because it's, like, it's not it's not stereotypical. Most women don't get attracted to thin, scrawny guys. But 
I do. So I'm like, I don't, I'm not into like really six pack muscles or anything. I, I don't mind if they've got a little bit of muscle on their arm. I've got big muscles on my arms, but um, do you know what I mean? They look like an armadillo if they've got loads of muscles up their chest. They're just How can you cuddle something like that? You know, you can't cuddle something that's got loads of, feels like a pile of ribs. It's just horrible to me. It's just repulsive. You know, I, I'm, it's still in these sexual dating groups on Facebook. And actually, one of them had an article in there um, it was referring to and uh, how to, you know, uh, advice for men from women on how to have good relationships. It's actually really good advice. But one guy goes, oh, it's very like for the woman, like the man doesn't get anything out of it type of thing. I thought, well, there's no wonder why you're still single, is there, mate? Do you know what I mean? But when I'm in there, like there's this guy and he goes, oh, I didn't feel good enough to be in here before because I, you know, of my body. But now since I've lost six stone, I think, you know, like I'm happy to be in here now. And he, he takes his top off and shows his body, which doesn't do anything for me. And I'm thinking, well, it shouldn't just be about the body. Like, you know, like if I happen to get a guy, an Indian guy in particular, who, who had a bit of weight on him, do you know what I mean? I don't think it'd be the end of the world. You know, I like skinny guys because I don't like being crushed. But, you know, like a guy who's bigger in weight can be a bit cuddly. Do you know what I mean? Like I do like cuddling as well. And I, I do like cuddliness, you know. I get attracted probably, you know, overall to thinner guys these days more. But, I mean, if I met a really nice nice cute for an indian guy or british born indian guy do you know what i mean if he had a little bit of weight on him i just think he's more to cuddle do you know what i mean and i'd still love him if i loved him do you know what i mean <laughs> Talk about this not person i don't even know yet um so you know what i mean i just think it's sad when a guy feels he can't show himself because he's over well got too much weight on and it's like well now i've got a great body now i can show it off because you'll want me and before I was ashamed of myself and, and of you seeing me. And I'm just thinking, you know, why is it they're always showing their body off? Having a brain is more sexy to me. Yes, Ray. I'm so glad you said that. Having a brain is more sexy. I get intelligence attraction. So um, in if, if someone is sexually attracted to someone because of their intelligence, they're called sapiosexual. But if someone's asexually attracted to someone because of their intelligence, they're a they're uh, they're a sapio asexual. So you got to be very careful because sapio sexual is someone who's really like wanting sex because of the intelligence. It turns them on sexually. But a sapio asexual is someone who's asexually turned on. So you'd be more attracted to having a relationship with someone, for example, who's very brainy and intelligent and intellectual because you love the intellectual stimulation and conversation. So I am I am a Ah, oh, Sam agrees as well. Yeah, I, I love an intelligent guy. I love having an intelligent conversation. If a guy hasn't, isn't very intelligent or I can't have an intelligent conversation, he just wants to come home, and play video games and watch TV all night, I, I'll be bored out of my brain. I'm really like, well, I'm not going to have a very long lasting, loving, fulfilling, fulfilling relationship with you. If that's all you want to do with your life. Do you know what I mean? If you haven't got anything intellectual to say, like I like, I specifically a lot of the time like Indian guys as well, because I find them very, very um, intellectual. Like, a lot of them are into IT. I get very, very asexually turned on by someone talking about IT and coding for some reason on website design. I've, I, like, if a guy talks to me about that, I find it really stimulating. I keep having this vision of me in the future talking with my Indian guy, and I'm I'm on the bed, and I'm literally holding his hands like this, and he's talking to me about website design and coding. And I'm just like, I really want to kiss you badly now. <laughs> You know, that's not what a typical girl would say, is it? I really want the guy to talk to me about code. Like, you know, like there's a song that goes, talk dirty to me, baby, you know, which is a sexual song. I'm like, talk code to me, baby, <laughs> instead, because it's like, I get asexually turned on as in I want you to kiss me more when you talk about code and website design. It's really weird. But I just like, I just find that, like, I can't code. I can build websites myself, but I can't code, which is good. I can do that. Um, but you know what I mean? It's kind of like, I'll come in now. I really want to snog your face off when you talk about code and Python. I don't even understand Python, but just by you talking about it and saying stuff, what you're doing, I just like turns me on as in, I want to kiss you. It's just really, really bizarre. And so, you know, that's why I just love intellectual conversation, you know, and it, 
if I was having a conversation, like, oh, you know, I love it. If I'm holding, which is quite cute, you know, if I'm holding the guy's hands in front of me, he's holding mine, and we're just looking into each other's eyes, talking about world, planet, and universe, and you might be saying how he feels about, you know, like things, goals, ambitions, and dreams he had as a kid, and, you know, like maybe he's got a passion for art, and he, he's artistic or crafty, or, you know, like just like the website design I said, and he's talking about his craft, and he's just so into it, and I can see his eyes and face light up. To me, that's very, very sexy very very beautiful very very attractive quality it's like it draws me into him and when his eyes light up when he's talking about things with passion and it's like maybe he's he's building a new piece of software maybe he's designing a new website and he's just so into it and i just find that very intellectually stimulating and attractive a lot of the time i don't get that with british guys present company with sam exclude but sam's not a guy he's not they're non-binary anyway i knew you said he's then sorry um but you know what i mean like you know, I, 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 you know, like some, there are a few exceptions to the rule, but I mean, a lot of the time, I don't find British guys that intelligent, to be honest. Uh, Ray, I have a sign and my wall that says, if you come to see me, turn phones off. If you want to be on the phone, stay at home. Oh, <laughs> that's really good. I have to say one thing that I was really happy about, right? My best female friend, it is a good sign to have, Sam. My best female friend came to see me at the weekend, right? She's the one that moved away. and I was so worried I wasn't going to see much of her. But I've been so happy that she... Hi, Heather. Lots of love to you. Nice to see you. And I was so worried that once my that my best friend had moved away and I wasn't going to see her very often. And I did get really upset quite a bit on this channel a while ago because I wanted her to be happy. I was happy she got a new guy and everything. But what has it turns out, she's been missing her friends so much that now she's with a guy, she's staying with him, everything's good with him, but she needs some weekends away, like coming to see us and to spend some time with us. And it's really good. And a while ago, I did say to her that I wasn't comfortable being in an older environment. Like, I have done it quite a lot with her, but, you know, she's older than me, but a lot of the guys that are there... um you know, they're, they're older and I just hate it. You know, I'm only attracted aesthetically to younger guys. I feel comfortable about being around younger guys. Older guys, I don't. And all of those guys, like 50s, 60s, a lot of them, uh, there may be some in their 40s as well, but, you know, they're just too old for me to be around. And a lot of them, they creep me out and, you know, like they fancy me. I'm, like, I'm not interested. And they perv over younger girls and I just like I hate the environment you know I don't I love seeing my friends you know but that that type of old environment and a lot of it's karaoke and my friend I love watching her do karaoke I absolutely adore watching her because I love seeing her sing but I don't actually like karaoke myself and you know what I mean I just sit there not doing much and so I said to my friend that I would prefer some quality time with her that I could, you know, like me and her on our own, I prefer that than being in a group where, you know, it's an older male environment situation. And do you know what I mean? Because I get really uncomfortable, especially when people are flirting with married men and all that type of thing. I mean, she's she's thankfully got a good guy now, so she she's not into that anymore. Um, but, you know, like, I mean, it's just, I've always preferred one-to-one -to, -one to be groups, to be honest. And when I'm out with a group, and it's kind of like they're older than me, a lot of them. And the whole environment's older. And I just prefer to be in a younger environment with, like, I like going clubbing to my club, as you know. And so I said to my friend that, you know, like, um, I love spending time with her, but I'd rather spend quality time just me and her on her own for a shorter time. And, you know, it'd be better, you know, like, because I can't, you know, when she's with the group, I can't spend much quality time with her. And, you know what I mean? I love dancing. She loves singing more than dancing. So we go to some places and we I do some dancing over there, but it's like I have to go away from that. And then there's karaoke and other things. And I just get like, there's nothing for me to do, really. Do you know what I mean? Because I love seeing my friend, but she's with other people, not just me. And so I don't get to see her in a quality way as much. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I do like, you know, I don't mind going out occasionally with them, but overall, I kind of decided in my life that, that environment's too old for me, if I'm honest. And my soul was feeling like it was dying doing that type of thing. Because it's just not who I am. It's I'm a 21st girl. I'm like 21 years old. That's how I believe I am. I've trained my brain that way. That's how I live now. And so being in an older environment, like I used to be in that environment when I was younger in birth certificate age. 
And now I'm old and burst of cage. I need to be in a younger environment. I've gone backwards. Like I go clubbing now. I never even went to clubbing till I was 24 and burst of cage. I didn't do it. Um, and then like now, I want to be out till two in the morning clubbing. I want to go and have a good time. I want to like be around 19, 20, 21 year olds. I, I like being around younger guys in their 20s. Obviously, it doesn't matter. You know, some guys are a bit older, like mid 20s. I think the hypersexual I danced was 28, 29, I'd say. But um, the last guy who kissed me, I think he was 23, 24. So, you know, I like being with guys in their 20s. I like that type of music, the foreign music. I like it. It's good for my body. It's good for my health. I'd rather spend like three hours there dancing than sat in a room where I'm not doing anything because I don't sing. Usually I had to go at one of the songs um, before my friend left where she is. I had to go at one of the songs. I sang a song so in front of everyone and it was okay. But I haven't got a great voice. And it's just like, it's not really me. Do you know what I mean? It's not being true to who I am. I felt like my soul was dying. So now I spoke to her. It was really difficult because I didn't want to lose her as a best friend. You know, I love her so much as a best friend. I've known her for over seven years and she's very dear to my heart. You know, she's done a lot for me and been there when I was bullied at work and lost my job and was redundant. She's like, no, I'll buy your food. Don't worry about it. You've just been made redundant. So I really do love my best female friend, even though she's not asexual. You know, and we are very similar on some things, very different on the others. And, you know what I mean? It was a very difficult conversation I had to have a while ago with her. And, you know, it's so nice this weekend that she came specifically to see me. She said, I listened to what you said. Um, we spent two and a half hours, I think it was, together. And that was just really nice quality time, you know. And she she made a point. She had to answer phone calls because everyone was wanting to see her because she's only back for the weekend. And, like, she's got so many friends, which is good down here rather than where she lives in her new place she hasn't got many friends at all or not really made any concrete friends that people sh you know she's very easy to make friends with but not any proper friends like she's currently got elsewhere where she used to live and with me uh in my city as well she's got another friend in my city as well we all get on well so um do you know what I mean? It was just nice. And she, when she'd done the phone calls, because a lot of people wanted to see her, trying to arrange to see her later that night because she was going back to where she used to live to see her, other other friends. And she saw them the night before. And she actually made a point of switching her phone off and said, I'm switching my phone off for a while now. It's like an hour, I think, she switched it off for. And that's really good because she doesn't usually do that. She's a person that usually has her phone on all the time and messages sometimes when you're talking to her. Not all the time, but sometimes. Um, and texts and stuff. And I was so happy uh, to just have that. You know, like, I'm switching my phone off now. That's enough. You know, and I like that. You know, like, I do that at meetups. Like, I have to have my phone on at the beginning of the meetup. I have to have it for the first, like, half an hour or whatever. Because I have to make sure in case any people turn up late. Do you know what I mean? I can't just switch my phone off once. I, I I got my I wasn't looking at my phone and for 45 minutes on one of the very first meetups I ever did the person was waiting outside because they were scared to come in because they were introverted didn't want to come in to a social situation and they didn't know which table I was at and they I, they wanted me to come and get them I didn't check my phone I didn't think about it I just thought they'll come and find us and I uh, didn't have their do I have a, oh yeah they messaged me that's right and I didn't I didn't even think to look and it, they'd been outside 45 minutes and I I was after that I learned my lesson like every single meetup now I make sure I have my phone on even if it's on silent but I make sure I check in it all the time constantly especially in the time that everyone's due to me that's why I prefer to get people's num you know like prefer to get the people coming know for definite who's coming I prefer that to drop in session because you know if there's a drop in session you you know I don't mind some time occasionally have a excuse me, a meal where people can drop in. But overall, I prefer a time because, you know, if you've got people that don't know where they're going or what they're doing, they can turn up at any time. Do you know what I mean? One, you could have moved on to somewhere else if you really did want to go anywhere else. And two, you know, if they, if they don't want to come in to a social situation, you don't know what the heck they're going to turn up and be outside. Do you know what I mean? And then that means you've got to keep your phone on all the time in case they need you. And, you know, you can't have it on loud because you have to have it on silent or vibrate usually i put it on silent because i don't want to disturb the other people but then you have to as an organizer look at your phone a lot do you know what i mean um so uh you're not creepy right no i know you're not creepy um yeah i know you're not creepy 
I feel I felt fine talking to you on video chat actually because I get on really well with you and you're not creepy I agree but most guys that are older I can't be near but I couldn't kiss you I couldn't do that you know I mean? but um I do like you a lot and I do get on really well with you and I was very comfortable in video chat with you I once kicked Simone out of my home because all they did was be on their phone all the time and never spoke. Oh, you once kicked someone out. I like you too. Thanks, Ray. Oh, you once kicked... I, th I thought it said Simone. Well, it does say Simone. You meant someone. I once kicked someone out of my home because all they did was be on their phone all the time and never spoke. Yeah, that's really bad. That is so rude. I can't stand people like that. I really can't. Like... You know, people be, should be switching their phones off, and especially in a relationship. You shouldn't be on your phone all the time. Like, I have to be on my phone some of the time. Like, if I was in a relationship, I have to have times when I am on the phone some of the time because of all the social media stuff I do. And if I've got customers, like some of the work I do, I have customers that have to be answered there and then. It's just the nature of my work. And so, you know, like I might have a situation, you know, if you're in a long term relationship and you're seeing each other regularly, there's going to be times when you probably do have to go on your phone or stuff. But, you know, I always like to switch off my phone as much as possible and because I don't get any work done. So I just get messaged all the time, which is nice that people care. Don't get me wrong. But it's just like sometimes it's just like. You know, I don't get anything done like today. It's been a very, very, very busy, hectic day for me, but I haven't. You know, I haven't done any of the asexual meet a mastery course, for example. But I worked through the night pretty much. I didn't go to sleep till like, was it seven this morning or something? Or was it five? Half five? I got up at, when did I get up? I got up at 11 and I had less than five hours sleep. I think it was, was it half six or something? I don't know. Anyway, oh, yeah, I cut my finger. Rain you, I cut my finger. No one else knows that. So, yeah, I cut that finger. It's a lot better now, see? But um, you can see. But Ray um, Ray was on the other end of the phone trying to message me. And I was like, I had to send it, try and send him a photograph. I had to press the, to take the photograph with my nose because I couldn't do it with my hand because it was bleeding. I had to put toilet paper on it to stop it bleeding. So I was like, I had to hold it, first of all. And it was had a lot of blood and I was going like this with my nose to try and take a picture to say thanks Heather to try and take a picture to say that I can't really message you back with my texting right now because I've got blood coming out of me yeah it did go all across here actually it was pretty horrible I knocked it on the wall one of the walls in my home I just knocked it and it took a little bit of skin off and decided it wanted to bleed right across my finger so yeah that did hurt actually but um but yeah, um, but yeah, I've been so busy today. Uh, really, really busy with good stuff. I felt really good, but it's just like, you know, I've had a long day and I haven't really done anything that I uh, totally wanted to get done. But I had to do a major food shop, you know, Friday's my food shop. Um, so yeah, I can th I think some food's quite cute as well sometimes. Like if I have like a chocolate bar, sometimes you can get cute looking chocolate bars, can't you? <laughs> Oh, you only just finished work, Ray. Oh, bless you. Bless you. I think you can get, like, I can't eat cake, but I think some cakes can look cute as well, can't they? Like, you can have lots of cute birthday cakes. Like, I did once. My ex did buy me a cake that was in the shape of my dog because I had a dog when I was a kid that was my best friend called Purdy, a Cocker Spaniel Caramel, and he got the um, – this is where I could eat cake because I can't eat cake anymore – and he got uh, a picture of my dog and the person did the cake in a, a picture of my dog on the cake. It was edible. It was really, really nice. So, you know, I think uh, some, pe some people can do very um, cute things. And I don't like to talk about my ex in cute situations because he really wasn't good overall. Um, I can't which ex I can't exactly remember which ex that was. I don't want to think about them. You can get an eat or cake. Yeah, but I can't eat cake anymore, Ray. But yes, that's great. I can't have sugar. I can't have wheat. I can't have gluten. I can't have yeast. I can't have spelt. <laughs> I can't have a lot of things. But yes, you can get eat or cakes. I, when I used to eat cake, I used to like the raspberry jam and cream filling in the cake. Every birthday, I used to have a raspberry jam and cream cake. But I do get these uh, bars from the shop the supermarket opposite where I live and they're cocoa 
with nuts and they taste like a chocolate truffle to me and i just love them so much but they've run out of stock tonight they're always running out of stock because everyone just buys them up because they're they're one of the most tastiest snacks you can ever have in your entire life it literally tastes like you're eating chocolate oh which reminds me i've got another chocolate to eat on my advent calendars today i've been keeping up with my chocolate advent calendar which is very cute did i show you i showed you the other day but i'm not sure if you saw it so look this is a very cute advent calendar don't you think do you know what I mean? See, I think things like this are cute. The little elves, the Santa. So I've had three already. Uh, I got a stocking. I think it was... I was stocking Christmas pudding and a bauble, I think it was. Something like that. Yeah. Decoration. So that's really, really cute. This is like... See, this is sugar-free, wheat-free, gluten-free, dairy-free, milk-free. Suitable for vegans as well. I love this. So, yeah, so I like, like, when it's Christmas, I literally decorate the whole of my flat. Like, my parents have got the decorations for me up in their attic, in, up in their loft. So, I think they're coming over next week, which is a little bit later than usual. But, you know, I will literally have everything decorated. Like, every single room will be decorated with Christmas stuff because I just love it. I love Christmas. I love magic and wonder and sparkly things. That's why I like a teenager star relationship. But I sometimes think maybe only you, Sandra, can give yourself this lovely teenager star relationship. Therefore, you should just stay with yourself single. Because I don't think any other guy, any other guy <laughs> besides myself, because I'm a girl, but a guy too. But I, look a bit, um, I think I think a girl can be a guy to herself if she wants to be. Um, and, but I just think, you know, like how is a guy even going to compete with the amount of romance, cute and cuddliness, and loved up 24-7 magical feeling that i give myself i just don't see it somehow but there must be a guy out there like me i mean if if i'm like this there must be an equivalent guy like this do you know what i mean because i believe there's something for everyone i i i given up buying those i eat the whole thing in one day <laughs> that's all right ray buy two so you eat one in one whole one in one day or buy 24 that's a good thing you need 24 of them because there's 21 days leading up Christmas. So instead of having one chocolate, you buy 24 of them and you have a box a day. I think that's a good plan. Uh, Sam, yeah, he's he is out there. Yeah, I, that's what I believe. I mean, there's got to be a guy like me, surely. There's got to be a guy who's into cute, cuddly stuff and just into romance and all that type of thing. Maybe he won't be as cute and cuddly as I would be into stuff, but he will be cute and cuddly and he'll be like a out of a romantic Disney movie. <laughs> I don't see why not. I mean, do you know what I mean? Just I get, you know, I, I just love life sometimes. Like, like today I just had the most amazing day, even though I haven't really, you know, like I, 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 you know, right. Santa won't bring you prezzies. <laughs> it's true. He's been a naughty boy as Ray. <laughs> But um, I do believe there's got to be someone out there that's like me. Do you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, I don't want to get into a relationship where I lose the cute cuddliness and all the romance and and magic. Do you know what I mean? Like, I sometimes feel that when you get into a relationship, it's all, like, boring. And, like, you know what I mean? It's all, like, normal. It's like, I can't do boring and normal. There is someone out there, but he's 55. <laughs> Ray, you've got, you're dating a woman at the moment. You can't have two. <laughs> Oh, bless you. <laughs> Thank you. That's very sweet. Um, but do you know what I mean? It's kind of like, I just think that, like, I love my life so much that I don't know if any guy could make me as happy as I make myself. And, you know, I wouldn't want to be any less happy than I am now. Like, I, I just love my life at the moment. Like, you know, it's not, you know, people could look at it and think it's not the most perfect. I, I honestly love my life so much. I just like, especially this week, I've just been like the last couple of days, I've just been loving my life because I feel like I'm making progress with things. I feel like I'm learning skills. I feel like I've got skills that I didn't, well, I kind of knew I had, but I didn't. 55 and alive sounds like um, number five is alive, doesn't it, Heather? I love that, uh, that short circuit robot that short circuit robot is cute we're talking about cute things on this live stream that's sh the short circuit number five is alive that 
robot is so cute. I love it so much. It's just so cute. Seriously. When I went to Disneyland Paris, there was number, you know, the number five, the Johnny Five robot. And he was like, there was a few of those robots actually. When you're doing the, is it the Star Wars? Is it the Star Wars? Uh, you do like a Star Wars shape, spaceship type of thing. And there was a Star Wars simulator actually there, Disneyland Paris. It's amazing. And yeah, they had number five is alive robots as you go and wait for this to board this um, ship. And I think they've got like three different versions. Johnny Five, yeah, that's right. And I think they've got three different versions on on in the Disneyland Paris. But this one is is pretty much exact replica of the one on the screen and he is so damn cute i mean seriously like i said he will come to you when the time is right yeah yes right in the meantime i am preparing for him when i was little i watched short circuit as a kid yeah it's a great film heather it's really really good i love i haven't watched it for years i'm too young now <laughs> who johnny five yeah, Short Circuit. Yeah, Short Circuit has got the robot called Johnny Five in it, hasn't it? Oh, that was to Ray. <laughs> oh, sorry. Like I said, he will come to you when the time is right. Who, Johnny Five? <laughs> oh, I'm getting a bit loud now for my housemates. Um, luckily, they're not too near me, but it is like gone midnight. It's like nearly half past midnight, and I'm kind of flapping a bit loud um but yeah oh yeah johnny five will come to me will he when the time's right yeah i like johnny five. i love robots i do have a fascination with robots actually i've always had a fascination with robots i do love robots i love the knight rider kit car you know because it's like a robotic car isn't it i love knight rider still like it to this day I love robots. I like watching films with robots in them. But yeah, when I went to Disneyland Paris, like literally I put a picture on my Facebook profile, which is probably still there in the archive somewhere from years ago. And it, it's like, um, and I said, oh, I want to take this cute one home with me. And it was literally a picture of the Johnny Five robot from Short Circuit that was in, the, it was um, while I was waiting for the Starship ride because I was waiting in the queue because they, they're moving. So whilst you're waiting the queue to board the, the, the star ship, you've got like three different robots along the way. And, you know, they're, mo they're all meant to be like Johnny Five, but one of them's like a, looks like an exact replica, whereas the other two are a bit like different, if you know what I mean, more like his siblings. And, um, you know, and, you know, he's doing all this movement and he's just so cute. And another thing that was cute about Disneyland Paris was a Buzz Lightyear. There was a Buzz Lightyear shoot ride and they had, um, uh, like a laser shoot ride, and they had um, a holographic uh, Buzz Lightyear, and that was so cute as well. And the whole Buzz Lightyear thing was really cute. And one of the rides I love in the UK, in Chessington World of Adventure, is World of Adventures, is Professor Bubbleworks. I think that is such a cute ride. It's very romantic. So if you've never been to Chessington World of Adventures in the UK before, it's a boat ride, right? And it's it's on water. It's like a big rubber ring. You don't just go on it with your, you know, you go on it with your friends, not just a romantic partner. But if you're with a romantic partner, it does make it the whole experience better from a romantic point of view because the scene's very romantic. Because, like, you go, but, you know, it's like that for everyone. So if you go with a mate or on your own, whatever, it just does the same thing. But obviously, if you're with a partner, it, I find it very romantic. And I find it romantic even when I'm with myself because I just think it's romantic. And so basically, um, yeah, the um, to infinity and beyond. Yes, Ray, to infinity and beyond. That's Buzz Lightyear and Disneyland Paris. And now I'm talking about Chessington World of Adventures. Professor Bubbleworks, my favourite. I don't know why it's like one of my favourite rides or it's like my, my favourite romantic ride. And I love it so much, even though it's a very plain, simple boat ride. But what happens in it? Anyway, you get on this like round, round boat. And when you go through it, like Professor Bubbleworks, partway through... I think it's three quarters of the way through, it sprays this um, this water up in the air over you. It's like a fountain that goes over your head of multicolours. So you're going through this boat. It's so romantic and too cute. You're going through this boat on this boat ride and literally over your head is all this water. You, get, you don't feel much of it. 
but it's just all over your head and it's all pretty colors all lit up and you just go through like a tunnel it is so beautiful i absolutely love it every time i want to go on that ride it's so beautiful and what I love in Disneyland Paris, my favourite ride there, well, one of my favourites, it's not the favourite, is Ratatouille. Even though they've got all that, I love all the heart, you know, the, the Armageddon ride and all the big rides. But Ratatouille, I love, that's so romantic. Again, it's like a boat ride, but it's uh, you're in a 4D movie scene. And they've got all the holographs on top of the, um, on top of the uh, roofs. And, you know, because it's 4D, you get to go underneath the oven in part of it and you feel the heat from the oven. Then you get to go in the kitchen in one point. You smell all the spices in the kitchen because it's 4D. So there's a smell. There's like, it's, you know, it's a senses: see, feel, touch, smell. Do you know what I mean? So you can like smell the actual spices. You can feel the actual heat. And it's just incredible. And this boat ride, right, I went on it lots of times on the Ratatouille one. So Ratatouille is in Disneyland Paris. Professor Bubble works in Chesney World Adventure back in the UK. So, but in Disneyland Paris, like, I love going Ratatouille. I just couldn't stop going around on it. And they, it was a single person, right? So there was like five rides they had there. I think it was five. For single person, if you're a single person, you can get on there quick, fast track. But what people were doing when there were couples, they were actually splitting up. They got rid of Bubble Works. When? Ray. When did they get rid of Bubble Works? I think 2017 was the last year I went there. Is that have they got rid of Bubble Works since 2017? Because I went on it in 2017. Because that's when I last went, I think. I'm pretty sure I did. I went to Chessington five times in one year. And I think 2017 was the year I did it, I think. Oh no, it wouldn't have been 2017, because that's the last that's the year I was made redundant. So it definitely wasn't that year. Must have been the year before. I can't even remember what year it was now. Yeah, I was made to be done in 2017. Oh, my God. That's the last time I was in employed work for an employer. It was a long time ago, two years. Time really flies. So it can't have been then. And then I went to Disneyland Paris. I went to Disneyland Paris that year as well. The same year I was made redundant. Must be right. Because two years ago, 2017. Oh, they got rid of Professor Bell Works two years ago. I've still got a mug from that. Oh, I'm gutted now. Absolutely gutted. Great. That's annoying. It's, it might can't have been 2000. I mean, it must have been 2016. I think I went there. Oh. I was going to say something rude. Really <laughs> but yes, that's not very good. I loved that ride. <laughs> Oh, man. At least they got Ratatouille still in Disneyland Paris, as far as I know. The Ratatouille ride is incredible. And every time you go around the ride, if you're in a different boat from a different angle, it looks different. Different things happen because you see, like, these rats scattering underneath the pipes and stuff like this. So every time you go around, there's, like, three different angles you can go at. Every time you go, you see something different. You see, like, the rats moving in a different way or a different part of the sewers or whatever they're meant to be doing. And you just it just looks different. And so that's what I loved about it, you know. Oh, I wish I was back in Disneyland Paris again. I had the most amazing time there. I would, you know, go in there in a heartbeat if I had the money. It's the most fantastic place. Like, it's completely at one with my soul. Lights, camera, action, noise. It's beautiful. Uh, it's just amazing. It's got everything I dreamed of them all there you know it's got all the disney stuff nice well the food's really difficult for me to get but once i eventually found out where i could eat it was fine because i went to rainforest cafe there and this foreign guy is really good i had this other woman take over one night and the food wasn't good there, and i had to complain about it and she and i said is the other guy back on duty and she said yeah and the other chef is as well so i'll come back and they refunded me some of my money because it didn't taste good when she was doing it like the beans were all dry and weird and the food wasn't up to par it just tasted really bland but, but when he the next day he was back he apologized and gave me rice so i had jacket potato chicken uh green beans and he gave me bowl of rice like a pot of rice for free so i got more money after that I kept getting more um, more food, sorry, for my money after that. I kept getting four items instead of three. And he never charged me anymore because because once they cocked up my meal, the other the woman did with the other chef. So I'm like, oh, this is good. I'm getting more for my money now. 
I loved Universal Studios America. You can't beat the Spider-Man ride. Oh, that does sound good, but I just don't like flying on a plane. So I'd rather stick to Disneyland Paris. But I haven't done a Spider-Man ride and I haven't done a Hulk ride. So, um, yeah, that sounds really cool, though. There was a, There's lots of stunt shows at Disneyland Paris. Um, and there's one where you get to be in this um, this truck and then the water starts pouring like in near the truck. You think it's going to completely flood the truck. It's like a, a stunt, special stunt thing. The water comes tipping down. It hits the side of the thing. It's amazing. And um, there was actually a stunt. There's a, a half an hour or, or more stunt show with cars. I recorded that. It should be on Facebook somewhere. I record every night. There's a Disney, Disney musical thing that's lit up on the castle. I recorded some that. Facebook banned me from filming live anymore from 24 hours. I got banned from Facebook because it's copyrighted music. So I was filming the whole thing live and it just stopped. It, it wouldn't post it. And then it banned me for 24 hours. I couldn't post anything. No videos. I think I could do text, but I can do no videos, no live streams for for um on Facebook for 24 hours. Banks, copyright music, and they're like, weren't happy with me at all. But um, it was incredible. Um, I still got some footage from it. It's really amazing. I just love it. Absolutely adored it. I'll go back there in a heartbeat. I, I just, you know, I, I absolutely loved it. I just want to go back there again. That's one of my dreams. I'm going to go back to Disneyland Paris. I love it so much. I will go back there. I know I will. And I'm getting like, I think it's so cute. I think a lot of, I think lots of Disney stuff is very cute. I think, I love all the magical stuff. I love Disney. I love, you know, I love going to the movies. To me, the movies are so magical. Like when I go to the cinema, it's just such a magical experience. I haven't actually been for a couple of weeks, two or three weeks. So I have to go again. I'm seeing friends at the moment. I'm feeling really good because I'm seeing my friends. Um, yeah, because I saw my best friend, female friend, Debbie, at the weekend. I don't usually say her name, do I? But yeah. And then um, Sam I'm seeing in January. So I've got to wait a little bit to see my best best friend, Sam. And then Andy's my other good best friend. Um, he is seeing me on Saturday. And then I've got an asexual meetup the following Saturday, where I'm seeing probably five asexuals at the moment. So it's kind of like I'm having an asexual fest and just a friend fest. <laughs> it's, like, it's nice. It's really nice. It feels really good. Like seeing a friend once a week is really nice. Do you know what I mean? It feels really good. Um, it kind of like speeds me up with other stuff. It's like my life's so hectic. I've just got to do this, this, this and this because I've not got time to do it. But, you know, like I had lots of plans for today, but kind of like they just went a bit out the window to a certain extent. But I knew I was going to have to have a food shop and that always kind of cocked part of your day up. But I was doing lots of stuff today. But yes, I can't wait. Fourth of January. It's going to be good, though, because me and you can chat all about Christmas. We can wish each other a happy new year. Um, you'll be one of the first people I see in the new year. So it's going to be amazing, and um, it's just going to be a good day, really good day, really good time, really good time. I'm looking forward to it. Tundra, you you love going to the cinema. Oh, Tundra loves going to the cinema, did you say? Did you say Tundra loves going to the cinema? I love the cinema. I find it so magical. Obviously, I try not to watch any films with nudity in it. So I like watching a lot of kids' films like Disney and Pixar. And a lot of them are cute. But they do have a lot of adult storylines in them lately. Do you know what I mean? It's like some of the stuff. I mean, Tundra loves the cinema. I thought that's what you meant. And, you know, like sometimes it's just like they have such adult storylines. And sometimes they use some sexual connotations like Angry Birds 2. That was a bit annoying that they started putting some sexual stuff in there. You know, I just found that a bit like, I mean, it partly was relevant to the storyline because she was supposed to be looking for a mate so she could have baby birdies, which she did later on. So I guess there was some relevance to it. But it's just like, and it's like she wanted to preen herself up for a right male to have a babies with basically that was kind of a big part of the story in that at angry birds too and i was just like oh. <laughs> but you know i prefer you know i like it when there's there's cute cubby stuff i like it in some of the kids movies where they got really strong friendships 
and you can even see that you know like the really strong friendship you can see some like romantic friendships as well in some kids movies i think but you know what i mean it's like kind of like i like in a relationship the really really strong friendship part as well you know like when you're a kid and yes and when you're a kid and well i didn't have many friends as a kid but if I imagine how it should be, you know, like you have like a really best friend. I mean, I've got best friends now. I've got best, best friend in Sam and it's amazing, but I want that obviously in a romantic partner as well. Um, I think when, you know, like in terms of relationship, I love it. If I had, you know, all that cute cuddliness and all that deep friendship and there for one another and, really get on I think you know it just makes it so much better I, I don't want a relationship where I'm worried about everything I say all the time Chandra loves snow dogs and eight below oh that's so good I haven't seen them I've seen clips of snow dogs but I haven't actually seen snow dogs as far as I remember but that's really nice I know you had another dog didn't you and that was watching the Simpsons that like watching the Simpsons the dog you were looking after I think you've still got the dog haven't you when you were video chatting with me it was watching the Simpsons <laughs> it's so cool but yeah I love stuff like that I think in a relationship you know like um I was watching a, a dating coach recently and something I find like really difficult is like you know it's like oh you know be careful how you say this be careful how you say that and Sometimes in a real relationship, when you're in the moment, you know, you can't always think about the perfect wording to use. Do you know what I mean? And the right thing to say and, you know, like watching his feelings and like, do you know what I mean? And kind of like leaving him alone when he's this way. And it's just kind of like, it kind of seems a bit like unrealistic. It's like when you're in a real relationship with someone sometimes something crops up on your mind and it's kind of like you have to deal with it there and then otherwise it can flare up into a bigger thing and I think if you get someone who's really your best friend and really good for you I think you'll naturally just not have so much conflict in the first place and you'll naturally like talk to each other more I think and you'll naturally get along more I think if you're really having to watch everything you say and worried about doing things wrong all the time I don't think you're with the right person to be honest with you and, you know, like when I hear, like when I hear the um, the dating coach talk lately, they kind of changed a little bit in some of the stuff they're saying. It's kind of like I don't want a relationship where it's just so hard work, you know. And the fact that I have to watch everything I say, I'm a very blunt person, black and white person, and I try to improve myself the way I speak and say it better. But you know, sometimes it's just like God, you just feel like it's so much easier just to come out with it do you know what I mean like I'm not happy with this and just say what you think I mean otherwise it's like god oh, I just want to rest you know what I mean because it's kind of like you're putting on a bit of an act trying to keep up with the things you're meant to be saying do you know what I mean the right way to say everything and to be honest with you you know it's like you could have said what you want to say in in like two seconds <laughs> you know what I mean instead of spending like half an hour worrying about it and how you're meant to approach the subject and by then something else could have cropped up so I just think like sometimes real relationships are not textbook you know stuff do you know what I mean I think sometimes there's so much textbook stuff like oh you should wait till this happens you should wait till that happens I mean at the end of the day I think there's certain situations you just know something's not right or something needs to be fixed do you know what I mean I you know there's certain like what I would call more masculine macho stuff that I just don't like about you know like I'm not attracted I still maintain that I'm not you know like I like a guy with some feminine traits I don't want a guy who's too I want a guy masculine strong in that way but I don't want a guy who's so masculine he's just like I'm with the, my mates down the pub and I'm not emotionally connected to you and I'm just like I don't know distant I don't know <laughs> I just think I need, I think it's good to have a, a guy that's got woman traits and a woman that's got guy traits and they come together in the middle quite frank with you I just think that works better personally but I think you have to have a good balance of both in each person to be honest Molly oh yeah Molly that's your other dog the one you're looking after though, for someone else yeah that one is the one that likes the Simpsons yeah it was really good to see that uh one of my guinea pigs uh used to like watching TV. 
actually, I think I'll have more than one guinea pig that used to like watching TV. And they used to sit. I think it was Truffles, was it? I used to have a guinea pig called Truffles. I think it was Truffles that used to sit there and watch TV when I had it on. But there was a, or maybe it was, I've had so many guinea pigs that have got very similar names. <laughs> so, um, but there was one brown guinea pig, uh, not chestnut. There was one brown guinea pig I had, and it used to, I think when I watched TV, one of them used to watch the soaps. I used to like watching soaps. So funny. But yeah, I find a lot of um, animals like watching TV. They can get really into it. People underestimate animals. They underestimate their intellect. They underestimate the fact they do understand what people are talking about. And there we go. Like my guinea pig, Angel, she bangs the pot all the time for my parents to keep feeding her more and more food. <laughs> my parents do feed her a lot of food. She just bangs it. She's like, I'm hungry now. I want more food. Society makes us condition our behaviour to detect how we act. Yeah, I don't like that. I mean, in dating relationships, you're supposed to be able to say things in a certain way to get a better reaction from the other person. And I do know it can help. Like, you're supposed to say, I feel this, rather than you did this, you did that, because you did this and you did that is blaming the person, right? But at the end of the day, I think if someone's done something blatantly wrong and bad, then you should, like, point out that I don't like that behaviour. I don't expect you to do it. Do you know what I mean? Because it's kind of like, beating around the bush i'm a very straightforward girl who just likes to tell it like it is and be blunt to be quite honest but i do know that you have to have a certain amount of decorum and i do try to say things more like i feel this i feel that tundra now got a radio in his tent <laughs> that's cool i tell people now i'm not going to change to please them they have to take me as i am tundra now got a radio in his tent oh bless you Ah, uh, I mean, I'm specifically talking about relationships. So I watch a lot of dating and relationship coach coaches, right? And there's this one coach I really, really, really think is great. He's given a lot of great advice. I've learned a lot from him. But lately, he's he's kind of changed a little bit on what he's saying. And before, it's very black and white. And I like that because I've got very black and white thinking. It's kind of like, well, if the guy's been like this with you, he's not your guy. Like, just forget him, move on type thing. And I like that. I think that's much better advice. But now he's started talking about all these grey areas that you can have, which I do know sometimes you can have grey areas, but I'm a very black and white girl. I'm like, it is or it isn't that. But a lot of the time it's like, there's no, I am grey. I've got grey areas with my asexuality is concerned. That's ironic. It's one of the very, very few things I've got grey areas with that I, well, I'm, I'm consciously aware of that I've got grey areas with, where a lot of the time I prefer black and white thinking. It either is or it isn't. It's like you're either doing productive work or you're not doing productive work. You're either relaxing and chilling or you're not relaxing and chilling. You're either, you know, you're either with a person or you're not with a person. You're either kissing a person or you're not kissing a person. You're either happy or you're not happy. <laughs> it's kind of like I'm very black and white gun. It's like if someone does something I don't like, I'd rather tell them outright than spend 10, 15 minutes trying to work, work out how to word it. And then by then, he's done something else wrong or I'm not happy with or I'm upset and anxious about something because maybe that's, I'm just an anxious person sometimes. And then I've made myself more anxious, not just necessarily him. And then it's like, well, and then, you know, it's all gotten out of hand. But that's why I like being single. I don't have this hassle. I'm like, well, do you know what I mean? I don't, I think relationships are hard work, but I don't think they should be so much hard work that you feel like, God, I've got to go and have a rest now because it's just too much hassle and trouble and too much trying to rearrange your language every five minutes of the day to make sure you don't sound like you're blaming them. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, like if a guy's not making me happy, I'd rather tell him, I'd rather say, well, you know, well, you don't keep in contact with me enough. Um, you know, I hardly hear from you. I don't really feel that into me. I, you know, my friends speak to me more than you do, yet you're romantically interested in me. And like, these are the things that I don't, you know, that might be fine for you about you or for another woman about you. But these are the things that I wouldn't be good for a relationship if I had one for me. Do you know what I mean? Whereas the correct way of saying it would be something like, oh, um, you know, it would be more coming from me, not you, you, you. It'd be more like, um, well, this is, I. well, in a relationship, I like the type of guy who's always in contact with me uh, on a regular basis. I like a guy who pays me a lot of time and attention, puts a lot of energy and effort into the relationship. I like a guy. So you're basically saying, instead of saying you're, you're, you, 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 you're saying, 
I I like, you know, I feel I like, you know, so you're very much turning onto a feeling and emotion within yourself. So you're not putting the emphasis on them, which I do agree with. It's kind of right, really. But it's just like sometimes when you're in a real relationship, you know, you don't always think about saying these things in that way. And, you know, like if you don't speak your mind, sometimes it just escalates, you know, like you can spend like ages trying to think of how to like say something cropped up and you didn't expect them to do it and they shocked you. You're not going to know how to phrase the right thing. And then you're going to say something like, well, you did this and I'm not happy with it. But the correct way of being would be something to say like, oh, when this happened, it made me feel this way. Or I felt this way when this happened. Or like, I noticed you on Facebook when you said you, you know, I noticed you on Facebook and you said that I know so you'd say something like, oh, for example, You'd say, oh, um, I know you said you was going to sleep last night. Um, and I saw that you were on Facebook. I'm just thinking uh, what particular reason they would there would be why that would happen or something. Because I'm playing a story in my head that maybe you're speaking to someone else that you might be romantically interested in. And I'm feeling that a bit anxious about that. Do you know what I mean? It's a lot of words that you're trying to phrase it so it's not looking like you're blaming them, but you're actually trying to get around it saying, I feel this way. It's just a very, very, you know, like sometimes like rewording stuff all the time. Like in the heat of moment, you might be thinking, well, you you just told me you're in a bed, yet you're on Facebook. Like, you know, what's going on? I mean, obviously, it depends on the person. Like sometimes I say I'm going to bed and I'm still four hours later up and I'm, I am actually talking to someone on Facebook. So I'm not saying that's wrong in every scenario or something. I'm just saying if it cropped up in a relationship that you thought the person's going to bed and you then think they're chatting up someone else. Do you know what I mean? You, you, you know, I guess it's about trust as well. And if you can trust that person, if you know them, I guess if you trust them and they're a good person, you're not going to have half of this problem. Which is why I think it's so important to get the right person in the first place for you. Um, I'm lucky, Ruth into archery. Yes, you are very lucky, Ray. You are very lucky, Ray. Very lucky. Ruth uh, is uh, Ray's, who Ray's dating at the moment. She's into archery and a lot of the other stuff. Like, I noticed something, a, a profession as well, or a, a profession she used to do is very good for you. Um, and she likes, yeah, I think she likes a lot of the same stuff as you. So... Do you know what I mean? It's good. It's really good. I think if you get someone really compatible for you, which is what you want, I think it shouldn't be so much of a problem because you, if anything crops up, it shouldn't, as you know, things shouldn't crop up as much as they would with other people, like that you don't get on as well with, that don't really understand you and not like you. But then things crop up, you know, you should just be able to kind of say something. Do you know what I mean? It's like spending hours over agonising which way to say this, that and the other. Do you know what I mean? It's like, obviously, there's a lot of trust. I mean, like, I do go online a lot. I'm on Facebook for business as well as for pleasure. Do you know what I mean? I'm on Facebook a hell of a lot. But I know I'm 100% trustworthy. I'm not going around on Facebook, going around chatting up loads of blokes. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, but I am on Facebook a lot. I mean, I can be up till four or five in the morning and someone's messaged me on Facebook and I decide to reply to them. But so that's a bad example I used in that. But I'm trying to say, like, if there was a situation where, for example, a woman didn't trust a bloke or vice versa, and they said that they were going to bed when they clearly weren't, you know, they're on Facebook messaging someone for ages, they might think, well, are you cheating on me? So, you know, sometimes it's like, you know, like, but the person's not supposed to say, are you cheating on me? Because that'll get a bad reaction from the other person going, oh, don't you trust me? Blah, blah, blah. So you've got to get around it by saying, I noticed, you know, I know she said you. You know you said you were going to bed, and um, I saw you were online. Just was wondering about that or something like that. Do you know what I mean? But you know, there's certain scenarios that might come up. I mean, they might do something that you you totally shocked by. I don't know what that might be, and then you might react um, emotionally to that without even meaning to, because it's just like trying to protect yourself, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Excuse me. So I think like. There was this dating coach giving advice to some women, and I think normally his advice is brilliant, but I just thought he's going a bit too grey area for me. Do you know what I mean? I kind of like black and white thinking. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's certain things 
You know what I mean? Like, if, for example, I saw a guy saying he was asexual, then all over his Facebook page was like, clearly, he was friends with loads of women with boobs that hardly had anything on, if anything on. He had like uh, pictures saying he was into shagging women and like stuff like that. I just wouldn't believe him. I'd be like, no, you're not really asexual. I'm not interested in you. Bye. No, not not like not accusing him. I would basically say, no, you're just, you know, that's it. You know what I mean? I'm not interested. I can't, you know what I mean? I wouldn't trust a guy like that. So I think in certain circumstances, it's very black and white. You just say what you think and mean and off you go. I don't think you can need to faff around with every single perfect word. Most of my Facebook is on rescue. <coughs> All my dog training. Yeah, you're very good, Ray. A dead giveaway, though, is like if a guy like, um, like, for example, obviously I'm in sexual dating groups, but, you know, I get chatted up by a lot of guys on Facebook. <laughs> who have never met before in my life, not even just through dating groups, you know? And they come on and then they frame a question. You go through their friends and they're pretty much all women. A lot of them are in sexual poses or with her, how anything on. And sometimes you click through them and they literally are in their underwear with their boobs hanging out and their butts hanging out. So basically there's nearly pretty much a porn profile. And it's like, no, thank you. If you're just friending women, because you just want on. I don't even know what the point of it is. I don't see the point of it. But for some reason, some guys like doing that, like collecting loads of women, like 396 women that have basically got, some of them have got hardly any clothes on, if any at all. And they just want to chat women up online. I don't see the point. I can't understand the mentality, honestly, of spending hours of your life just chatting women up online to just look at their pictures with boobs stuck out and a G-string up their ass. I just can't get it. I just can't understand why guys want to waste their life away doing that. Do you know what I mean? I just can't. Even the guys that do like some stuff like that, it seems like that's all they do is just chat women up online and just want that. I like, how boring your life must be if that's all you can do with your time. It just must be a very mundane, boring life. I couldn't even have the, not that I would want to do that, but I would hate doing that. I would never do something like that, but it's just like so bloody boring, excuse my language. Who wants to do that? Just have, keep getting women friends who you've got loads, like 376 or whatever, and they've got hardly anything on them. And like, are you really going to have a relationship with these women? What, what are you collecting them for? Trophies? They're not your trophy anyway. Do you know what I mean? It's just ridiculous. It's just something that really irritates me. I think if you've got nothing better to do with your time, do you know what I mean? Than be a women collector. It's just like ridiculous. And they, uh, some of them have, have got wives and parts. There was a guy this week, right? And he's he was in the dating group. Right? I thought he was single because he's in 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 the UK singles group. And he messaged me a while ago. I said I'm looking for um, degrading. I agree, Heather. I said to him before. Where's my water gone? Have I got water here. Oh yeah, I said to him before. Sorry, I'm bending down. I said to him, before, yeah, degrading very degrading but you know it's like they've got nothing better to do guys what was i talking about um i was talking about these guys messaging me when i um sorry i have to keep my throat going because it goes sore out uh my throat going my my water going through my throat um yeah what was i saying yeah i mean they just seem to you know like some of these people like there was a guy from uk sexual state you know uk singles but it's a sexual dating group right and i told him he was too old for me right i told him because he was in the group i told him a while ago you thanks very much for your friend request or whatever you're but you're or thanks very much you know because he said hi or whatever i said but i'm looking for a younger guy and he messaged me again yesterday saying hi and he's he's got a picture of him with a woman and clearly I'll pretty much say the relationship when the woman's kissing him, like she's kissing him on his face, but you know what I mean? They're close together with her, it's not like basically kissing his face. She's not the way they do it, it's not something you usually do with a friend with the way they're looking. So I'm just like thinking, well, I'm not interested in it. I've told him I'm not interested in him anyway, but why, why, why start speaking to me again when you clearly look like you've got a woman now? It's just. Because it, uh, she's on his profile as well, and she's like going Mwah! to him like this, and I'm thinking, what's the point? Uh, I use Facebook to educate people, or try to. Yes, Ray. I mean, I use Facebook to. Well, I use Facebook to maintain my business pages and to answer message there to speak to people in my group. Because although I'm off Facebook quite a lot, I'm always see 
messages flick up, especially from my asexual friends. So I do end up going on there every so often and answering comments um, and replying to them. And especially when you guys post pictures, you know, I'm I'm going to have to be offline quite a bit these next few days. I need to get shed loads of work done that I'm, I'm not being able to do. Do you know what I mean? It's like there's one more thing I've got to do that I need Facebook for, um, which is a uh, which is um I'm on um what is that I'm in, in a special event of experts talking about asexuality. Excuse me, it's an online summit, so I need to promote that, and I need the the stuff access to the stuff on Facebook. But that's the thing, I do a lot of business stuff on Facebook. Like there was a guy yesterday talking to me about business stuff you know so I do a mixture of business and then I have my friends messaging me as well on there and then I have other business people messaging me uh, like business transaction people and it's just like I do a lot on Facebook but I have to go off it so I'm like, I, I like I do more live streams on here I don't do many live streams on Facebook because I find if I'm on Facebook all the time I never get off it and I can never do anything and sometimes you know, I'm on this channel, I'm talking about people on Facebook or things that have happened on Facebook. And I find it's a bit like, here's a bit more private, do you know what I mean? Than, you know, being on Facebook, talking about people on Facebook. I think it's a bit weird or wrong. So I prefer a lot of the time, if I'm talking about stuff that's happened on Facebook, to discuss it on this channel, because I feel like it's away from Facebook and it's a bit more polite and a bit more confidential, even though I'm saying it to the world, so anyone could click through it. It's a bit better... I feel better about it. Do you know what I mean? I mean, there are, there are sometimes I go live on Facebook and I'm going out somewhere sometimes to do the video and my Ace Fibre Girl page, I used to stream on quite a bit and I need to get back to doing that um, when I've caught up on my work. But you know what I mean? It's like, you know, and I think good people you can tell on there, like I've seen your post rate. It's completely different. Do you know what I mean? You do educate people. A lot of people that are good people on there, you know, they are posting stuff like to do with animal rights or to do with their beliefs like you know being a vegan or maybe they're posting stuff of their day and things like that you know they're not going around you know and they've got friends that are like mixed friends do you know what I mean like male and female and you know some people are like you know they're not they they're more choosy with who their friends are they're not like you don't see like like 50 friends at a time or something do you know what I mean and you know, I mean, you can usually tell by the profile whether they're quite decent or not. Um, but, you know, when you've got these guys, I mean, some of them, you can tell that their profiles are so bad. They just created the profile in the last two months and they just got one picture on there and like 300 women. I'm like, oh, it's taking you, what, two months to get 300 or 400 women on your profile? Do you know what I mean? It must be all you're doing. You, you know pretty much they've got another profile somewhere. That's just another profile they've created to women catch basically and they've got their one for their friends and family elsewhere I even said that to one guy he goes oh no i haven't i thought yes you have this is not your real profile this is not your main one do you know what i mean you're not gonna have your friends and family for a start your friends and family not even on this profile as far as i can see so you're gonna have another one somewhere anyway i think i'm gonna love you and leave you for tonight because i've been streaming for nearly two hours but I think asexuals overall love things that are much more cute, cuddly, sweet and innocent overall, I'd say, than, do you know what I mean, than um, than sexuals. I think we like, we, we appreciate the fluffy things more. We appreciate the more magic of life. Do you know what I mean? We appreciate the more, you know, the more gentle stuff, I think. And I think we just like, you know, there's a lot of stuff that we do like this more cute. Do you know what I mean? I think it's really good. Anyway, yeah, thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks for the thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Um, thanks, Sam, for tuning in. Thanks, Ray. Thanks, Heather. And I know there was Lou earlier on that had to get back to work. So thank you, Lou. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining me. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to hit that big, big L icon so you get notified of every time I go live like now I post a new video. Thanks so much for the chat tonight. It's been absolutely amazing. And good night, Sam. Good night, Heather. Good night, Ray. Good night, Lou from earlier. And good night to the other person that's watching me right now and all the other people that's watched me earlier that's tuned in. I love you all lots and I'll see you on the next uh, live stream. Don't forget, like I said, if you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button below and the bell icons to get notified every time i go live like that or post a new video i'll see you on the next live stream take care have a wonderful day bye